Hello Aquarius, this is your July reading. We're doing love life, we're doing channeled messages, we're doing everything you need to know if you're an Aquarius, sun, moon, rising or Venus. Okay, using the Groovy Weight Tarot Stars Edition. It's quite an Aquarian deck actually. It's a little bit eccentric. Um, it's got some good outfits. And then it's got glittery stars in the background. I know, just like you. Okay, we're gonna have a couple of oof, a couple of cards that signal the energy that we're bringing into the month. Nice. And then we'll go ahead, have a look what else we need to know. Right, we start with the Knight of Wands. Lovely, lovely, lovely energy. You could be dealing with a fire sign or you could also be activating the fire that's in your own natal chart. Um, especially if you've got like moon in a fire sign or Venus in a fire sign, um, together with your kind of cool, airy Aquarianness and your quirkiness, this gives you a real zippity doodah coming into the month. You could of course be dealing with a fire sign yourself and dealing with communication. So if we look at this, we get the Eight of Wands together with the Knight of Wands. That is a lot of fire energy knocking around. We've got Eight of Wands is momentum and it's messages. It's communications that are quite sudden. You know, the Knight of Wands does not um, issue an invitation or let you know when he's storming in on his horse. He's just like, do -do -do -do, I'm here. Do you know what I mean? get the coffee on or crack the bottle of wine open, get me a cold one, I've arrived. So it's a communication that maybe you're not completely expecting. It's a communication that maybe you forgot about or it's been so long you've given up on. In July, towards the 23rd, we've got the sun entering Leo, which is your opposite sign. And on the same day, we've got Venus going retrograde and Chiron going retrograde. And that's the day after a new moon in Cancer. Well, no, that's a few days after. Venus and Chiron going retrograde are a big deal. In terms, obviously, Venus is the planet of love and Chiron is the planet that governs your wounds, your kind of childhood wounds your relationship wounds and what's the lesson that keeps coming up in your life that you feel like you need to learn. There's something here about, I feel like you've been watching and waiting and that could be for a romantic prospect. So, or it could also be, and we'll have a look because we'll look a bit at career, we'll look a bit at love, it could also be that you're waiting for a passion project or a job you really would love or an opportunity you'd love. And I feel like since May, when Mercury was retrograde, that you've been on the hook a little bit, you know? You've been waiting, you've been on the hook a little bit about it. It feels like I'm feeling a sort of sense of nervousness. Okay. Let's have a look. I'm going to see what that's about. I'm going to take two cards for that. What are we waiting for? Um, how is that panning out for us? There will be an extended reading and if this is for you, if this turns out to be your story, it really resonates with you, then you can choose to carry it on. It will be the first link in the description box. And we take, usually it's your love story that comes up for the extended reading. How do they feel about you? And we just dig a bit deeper about what's going on. What do we need to know Ooh. about what Aquarius has been waiting for? I'll show you the cards actually. So you can see them too. It's so hot in here. Oof. Let me know what the weather's like where you are, Aquarius. Drop me a comment in the comment box. Let me know if you're waiting for something and let me know what went on in May. You know, what was going on for you? Is that resonating for you? Hit the like button if it's resonating for you as well. Okay, I'll stop bossing you around now and we'll talk about the cards. 
Ten of Pentacles. You're waiting about something to do with security. Now, this can be about relationship security because the Ten of Pentacles always has this generational picture. So you've got the grandfather, you've got the, I think it's like a married couple or the mum and the daughter or whatever it is. You've got the dogs, you've got the kids. You've got the tree of life going on here that's kind of imposed over the top. You've got a royal crest, um, the castle even. Now, I know that we're probably not dealing with, you know, I'm biting my nails because I'm wondering if more royal crest has arrived. Although, by God, leave me a comment if that is the case, because I I'm here for that. I'm right here for that. And I wish I was. I wish I had a royal crest. Do you know what I mean? We should all have a crest of our own particular name, shouldn't we? And maybe our own tartan to go with it. I don't know where that came from. Okay, and then we have the three of wands to go with it. I'm just pulling my trousers up. I'm gonna be honest with you. I've got like voluminous elasticated trousers on and it's so hot in here that I'm kind of hitching them up. So it's not a nice sight actually from the knees down, but luckily for you Aquarius, you don't have to see that. Three of Wands is prospecting, growing, something multiplying. So in terms of a relationship, it's like taking it to the next level. Is this going to go to the next level? If this is to do with job and career, is this going to go to a level where I can actually buy a house, afford the rent, um, not even just afford the rent, but choose my rent, you know, um, rent somewhere that I like rather than then I can just about afford. It's a very, very security and prosperity conscious card, the Ten of Pentacles. In relationships, it is a commitment of sorts, exclusivity, marriage, moving in together. Um, building on something in the very 3D tangible sense. It looks like there's potential here with the Three of Wands. In fact, these Three Wands cards turning up together all look like potential to me. And it's nice because I feel like you didn't know if there was potential. What is in the background of this, please. What do we not know about? Never mind what we know, what do we not know about? Oh my God! I don't mind not knowing about that. I'm just gonna turn that up so I can see the cards better. Ooh, what a combo. Okay, so what we don't know about is this beautiful Knight of Cups. One of the nicest. I mean, these tarot cards, the colouring, I think it's very Aquarian because it's a little bit out there and you probably can't see in the light. Can you, there's just little stars. When you shine a light um, directly on the cards, they light up with loads of different stars, which is gorgeous. Anyway, Knight of Cups, a love offer. That's what you don't know about. This is somebody coming forward and it's not, you know, and you may actually, I'm going to say this now, I'm going to commit myself, you may get the page of cups as well. Because I was going to say it's not just some dude knocking around with a smelly fish in a cup in a sort of, hey, do you want to go out with me? I've got a smelly fish in a cup. I haven't actually got a horse yet, you know, I haven't got my armour on, but I thought you'd appreciate the smelly fish. I wrote a poem about the smelly fish. Would you like me to read it to you? And you think, nah, I think I'll pass. Knight of Cups has got it together. They've gone and got a horse. They've got livery. They've got the outfit on. You know, the, the, it's on when you get the Knight of Cups. They've got a big goblet and a cup to offer. Sounded a bit weird, didn't it? Um, they have the cup. There's no smelly fish in there. It's just like, I've got it together. Would you like to do X, Y, or Z? I'm coming forward. Knight of Cups as well. It's a bit like the Knight of Wands. It's the energy of somebody claiming, coming in, knowing who they are, initiating, bringing something forward. 
but they plow and what we don't know is they're plowing into the four of cups which is very interesting to me particularly since they're offering a cup here you can see it and here the um, spirit hand is offering a cup and somebody doesn't know if they want it or not for some of you you may have waited so long for this that when it shows up you're suddenly feeling very choosy now I don't mind that I think it's always better to be in the position of being choosy than desperate you know it's a nicer position to be in it feels better and you're certainly more in control of things and Aquarius does like to be in control of things um, it doesn't make you controlling it just means that you deal with the facts you're an Aquarius fixed air you know give me the information tell me the facts what am I dealing with here okay so if this is to do also with a career move something to do with prosperity you've been waiting on that too and when it does turn up which it looks like it will and I would bet you anything it will be around the time between the 17th when we have that gorgeous new moon in Cancer and the 23rd when we have Venus and Chiron going retrograde Venus retrograde is a, it's obviously what it implies Venus is the planet of love you're looking back you know you revise things and it also makes you a bit unsure about making decisions especially about things you love career people whatever it is oh my god how many nights do you want we also have the knight of pentacles so far we've got air with the knight of swords we've got cups with the knight of water with the knight of cups and we've got pentacles or earth okay we've got the knight of pentacles with justice that is a very nice combination and it's screaming at me look at the bottom of the deck so i'm going to put that right there and look what's at the bottom the tower okay Hmm, interesting so you have the knight of pentacles here and you have the justice card the knight of pentacles is telling you that this isn't instant by a long chalk it's been coming a long time and it takes a long time to get it together properly riding straight into justice the first major arcana that we've had in this reading now justice has a flavor of resetting karma for some of you the karma has been out of whack with this situation and justice as this major kind of major 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 arcana ruling libra and venus is the planetary ruler of libra interestingly there's going to be some kind of rearrangement of things some quite it seems like it's sudden but it's not sudden and i'll unpack a little bit more about what that means but it seems like it's sudden but it's not sudden it appears to come out of the blue that there is quite a switch up in energy so there is a communication that comes out of the blue that's knight of wands it's concerning the amount of security and potential that there is in a situation and what you don't know is the knight of cups that there's a potentially there's a love thing being offered whether that is to do with career or whether it's to do with love you may not know if you want it or not by the time it comes you can afford to be choosy I'm telling you here you can afford to be picky you can afford to be choosy both picky and choosy and the knight of pentacles is slowly enacting a cycle of justice and then you've got the tower Pluto platonic kind of Uranus which of course is your ruler 
the forces of surprise. Tower stands on its own, I think. Tell us about love life, please, in this reading. Tell us about the love life. Ooh. The Hierophant or the Guru. Ooh. The Guru or the Hierophant and the Ten of Wands are the first cards that we get out for the love life. So, interesting, the Hierophant, also referred to as the High Priest, represents commitment. Obviously, marriage in terms of the priest being the person who used to marry the couples. Um, it also, in a few decks, represents Chiron, the wounded healer. Some of you have got commitment issues being activated around the time between the 17th and the 23rd of July. Very interestingly, you have old wounds when it comes to commitment yourself. And this may be that you find it difficult to commit or that the situation has been so complex that you don't know whether you should. So it's not just like I want to be footloose and fancy free. It's more like I don't know if I can trust you yet. And what's more, I'm not sure if I trust myself. The guru is also an indication that you could be finding answers outside yourself from spiritual people. But then we run into this ten of wands. And the Ten of Wands is a card where you've taken something to a certain extent and it's bogging you down. You know, it's bothering you, it's making you... It's making you feel overwhelmed. And the Tower is something that breaks up this feeling of taking on too much trying to do too much yourself, trying to make everything work yourself, taking on the energy of others. Okay, what else do we need to know about love life, please? Got a really wobbly table. I really must fix that one day. I like your tower in the middle. I actually really like this tower because it's got a merman and a mermaid in it. It's just a bit nicer than your average kings and queens jumping out of windows tower, isn't it? Okay, what more for the... Woof, gosh. What more for the love life but the death card and the seven of pentacles. Okay, good. Death card being Scorpio. So some of you might be dealing with Scorpio or Scorpio energy. This, and also, of course, Pluto is a ruler of Scorpio, which we have in the tower. Let's just move you along a bit, tower. I know, nobody puts tower in the corner. I hear you. Death card. By the way, leave me a comment if any of the rest of you talk to your tarot cards like I do. Sometimes they talk back. Death card, a big change in your love life. If we're going to get the death card and the tower card together... I'm going to ignore the Seven of Pentacles for a minute and I'm going to do a bridging card between Death and the Tower. Yes, I am. Oh, God. It just got interesting. Seven of Swords. God. Okay with the Seven of Pentacles. Aquarius, by the end of the month, you have a lot to think about here. The Seven of Swords is a card where somebody has stolen five swords and they're quite deliberately stealing them and they're looking back at the last two and thinking, can I squeeze those into my knapsack as well? 
or is that going to really upset the apple cart? I'm going to investigate this energy a little bit because it's really interesting. Death card is like the excavation of an old system that can't continue anymore. So it must renew. It must be born again. It must rise from the ashes like a phoenix. But the tower card is, I want, and again, the tower card says, I want to destroy everything that isn't true. Everything that contains denial. I don't want it. I, it won't continue. And you might be, Aquarius, hanging on to something that I would expect you have a feeling that you shouldn't be hanging on to here. Whether it's hope, a thought, a person, a thing, whatever it is. Seven of Pentacles is you considering your position. At least you're going to have a position to consider though. Before, I don't think you did. So you're out of the waiting game by the end of the month, but you're into the decision making part. Leave me a comment, by the way, and do subscribe to the channel if this is resonating. It helps me because it helps the channel grow. It helps you because sometimes I put videos out without warning and then you'll be the first to know. I think that vaguely rhymed as well. I didn't mean that. Okay, let's look at this knotty energy. I wanna look a bit further into it. I can't leave it alone. Oof. When you get the two of swords, sometimes that's the tarot saying, Cool your jets, cool your jets, Aquarius. You know as much as you need to know right now. We're like, no, tell me more, as they said in Greece. Oh, cripes. Tara's like, fair enough. Don't say I didn't warn you. Have some of the lovers. If we look at this as a pair, we've got the two of swords along with these lovely tattooed lovers, okay? The lovers in itself is a twin card. Twin flames, Gemini energy, whatever you wanna call it, there's the energy of these two people who are united with each other, but at the same time, the lovers is called the choice or used to be called the choice. The two of swords indicates there is a twin aspect to this that there is the energy of a decision needing to be made that can't yet be made. And that's why with the Two of Swords, you always get somebody who's wearing, um, well here it's like really, really cool sunglasses. Normally it's a blindfold. Aquarius, you are gonna come to a point where a decision needs to be made. Some new information, shall we call it here, will find its way to you with the Seven of Swords and the Tower and the Death card. And I don't know if this will be, I don't think we can call it positive or negative information. The Knights are messengers and you've got wands, you've got cups and you've got pentacles. And who knows, in the extended, you might get the, the swords, you know. We have a decision to make here about a situation where there are two people very much, I want to say tied to each other in some way, okay? But it's a slow burner of a decision. It really ain't quick. But it will be a lot easier from about the 17th onwards when new information comes to light then you'll be making an informed choice. Nice, we get the sun. With the nine of wands. Oh my gosh. And that nine of cups, you're getting pairs of numbers together. So if you're into numerology, this is big for you. 11 and 11 is big for you because of the Twin Flame card as well. 
Okay. The Sun card is very welcome at this point because the Sun card is just telling us that we have luck and laughter and light and we have remedy and we have health and a sense of being recharged. The Nine of Wands and the Nine of Cups are telling us that there are certain things you need to defend yourself against with good boundaries. But also the universe invites you to invite yourself to the buffet of good fortune here. In other words, the universe wants you to concentrate on what you actually want. What is your desired outcome? Don't concentrate on what you don't want. We're talking manifesting here, okay? There comes a crunch point. But I do feel with the new information you've got, that crunch point is a heck of a lot easier. In the extended reading, I'm going to look at that. I'm going to look at the crunch point. I'm going to look at the lovers, the seven of swords. I'm going to ask the questions. You, I don't know. You probably don't want to know about. Like, is there something going on in the background? How do they feel about you? Is there something that we need to know? What's this stuff about all this communication and whatnot? Let's have a love card for you. Hmm. Oof. You get worthiness. Worthiness. That will come into it because how far you how far you dig for the truth. Once you've been given a little bit, you're going to want a whole lot more. And your sense of self-worth will propel you forward for this. Aquarius, I'm going to go do the extended. Do hit the like button if it resonated. Leave me a comment, please, lovely Aquarians, about your situation. I read and I reply to my comments, so please do. And I'll see you on the other side. Namaste.